Hello everybody, today we'll talk about Palestine that was defined by the League of Nations in 1920. In today's video I would like to talk about the different aspect of Palestine. Not its borders or legitimacy in terms of international law, but rather about the intent of its creation. We know now that the mandates were temporary administrations until the administered areas would proclaim independence. But what was Palestine supposed to become? Um, a Jewish state or an Arab state or maybe both? In order to understand these things, we need to examine some legal documents. Uh, I will go chronologically. First of all, there was the Balfour Declaration. Though it was not a legally binding document at the moment of its creation, it did actually get a legal binding power at the San Remo Conference of April 1920. And it was done under the legal basis uh, of the Article 22 of the Covenant of the League of Nations, which in turn was legally based in international law. It was declared favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. I further claim that in Palestine does not necessarily mean the whole Palestine and that home does not necessarily mean a state. That maybe Palestine was supposed to be an Arab country with Jews in there. I know it sounds a little bit weird, but uh, let's see. I will try and see what was really intended by looking into some articles of the mandate for Palestine. Keep in mind that the mandate was not of Britain, but of League of Nations. Britain was the mandatory power that was answering to the League of Nations, which at that time was already 50 states. Uh, first, let's look at the preface. We can see that in here it repeats and confirms again that the Balfour Declaration is now in legal and binding effect. Please note that the preface for the mandate clearly states recognition to the historical connection, meaning that the constant claim of Palestine by the Jews and their continuous presence in the land of Israel was recognized as the basis for a legal claim to that territory in terms of international law, which in turn makes the Jews sovereign nation in that territory and gives them undisputable basis to the claim that the whole Palestine was intended to be a Jewish state. But if I stop here, the video would be very short. So let's look at some more articles. Article 2. By reading this, we understand that the goal was to establish a Jewish home in Palestine. Nothing else, not a home for anyone else, and not a home inside another home, or anything like this. If the phrase in Palestine would not mean whole Palestine, this paragraph would look different. It would be something like establishment of an Arabic country within which there would be a Jewish home or something like this. Article 4. Um, you may be noticing that I'm skipping some articles, but don't worry, they're not contradicting the idea. It's just that they are irrelevant to the current discussion. Uh, in any case, viewer is welcome to conduct an independent research uh, to determine if my words are true. So let's continue. In this case, we see that the Jewish agency will be selected in order to advise and cooperate with the mandatory administration. And it repeats again that the purpose of it is to ensure the interests of the Jewish population. And there is no mention about Arabs or any other agencies. Article 6. This article legally binds Britain to facilitate Jewish immigration to Palestine. It, it doesn't talk about immigration of anyone else, it just says about the Jews. Also, the legal meaning of it is uh, if a Jew would like to come to Palestine and settle, Britain would not be able to stop him. The basis for that is that the Jews were recognized in international law as a sovereign nation of Palestine, while the mandatory powers, in this case in Britain, they were just administrators. Good analogy would be a legal guardian for a child that inherited a huge house. Uh, the legal guardian cannot stop the child from living in that house. Article 7. Uh, in order to clearly understand this article, we need to understand uh, what nationality means in, uh, as a legal term. Uh, nationality means citizenship and nation means a country. For example, national holiday means a holiday that is celebrated by the whole country. George Washington's birthday is a national holiday in the United States. It is clearly shown in this article that Britain was charged with the responsibility of creating a citizenship law. It is also clear that only a Jew could become a citizen of Palestine. By the way, citizen of Palestine is Palestinian. This article, which is the international law, states that Palestinian is a Jew. There is nothing in this article that is stating anything about Arabs or anyone else becoming citizens. Same as nothing in articles of the Syrian or Iraqi mandates say anything about the Jews. 
Now, please understand that this document was not a crazy racist paper that completely stripped everybody else from their rights and just gave everything to the Jews. The Balfour Declaration itself, which was the first document that led to all of this, mentioned the rights of the local communities, by which it meant not only Arabs, but also different religions like uh, Christians, Druze, Muslim, or anyone else. Uh, Article 9, 11, 14, 15, 23, and 24 all have ensured the interests of different communities in Palestine, each in respect of different issues, such as rights to settle in the land or observe their own religious holidays. Okay, now that we have examined the articles of the mandate, I want to straighten my point a little bit by looking at some other sources rather than the mandate. When Churchill started to issue his illegal white papers that were violating the Jewish rights in Palestine, there was a conference that was held. And Chaim Weissman, Churchill, Balfour, and Lord George were present. Uh, Chaim Weissman just asked them a plain question. He said, what did you mean when you gave us the Balfour Declaration? So Balfour and Lloyd George, people who have personally drafted the declaration, replied that they have meant and understood the Jewish state. David Lloyd George that I have just mentioned, who was a Prime Minister of Britain and who was personally involved with the creation of the Balfour Declaration, has clearly stated that Palestine was supposed to be a Jewish state on another occasion. He did it in a radio broadcast in 1939, just six days after another illegal white paper was made public. The full text is on the screen. And finally, the conclusion to this video is that the mandate for Palestine was formed with one and only purpose, the creation of an independent Jewish state. Thank you for watching.